Hello friends, welcome to my channel if you're new here. Welcome back if you're a returning subscriber. My name is Brittany. On this channel I share my stupid opinions about the books I've been reading. Today's book is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. Let's run through averages on Goodreads and the story graph. So this one averages 4.31 on Goodreads and has over a million ratings. It's 4.28 on the story graph. And here you can find content warnings. This one does require some content warnings. Let's run through everything. The synopsis that I've transcribed from Goodreads is, was it murder, a tragic accident, or simply parents behaving badly. What we can't argue is that someone is certainly dead. Madeline is funny, biting, passionate, and a force to be reckoned with. She literally remembers everything, forgives absolutely nothing, and her best friend is Celeste, who is a kind and beautiful woman who has the power to make the world stop and stare. She is paying a price for the illusion of perfection. Single mom and new to town Jane is so young, she's constantly mistaken for a nanny. These three women are all at a different crossroads when their paths meet, but they're all going to end up in the shocking same place. Little lies can turn lethal. I'm not gonna lie, it took me a long time to get through this. And I will point out that Stephen King's little blurb up here, calling it funny and scary. I don't necessarily agree with that sentiment. Let's run through everything. For the characters, I wrote in my notes that I considered this book to be kind of a healthy mix of character and plot driven. I always, always, always focus so heavily on the characters because I think that that is, well, for me, that is a very important aspect of books. I like to talk about the characters much more than I like to talk about the plot because I think that characters carry the plot forward, you know? Like I said, going through the synopsis, Madeline and Celeste Celeste are besties. Madeline is turning 40 in the opening of the book. She has three kids. Abigail, who is 14. Fred, who I think was like eight. And Chloe, who's five. Abigail's father dipped out when she was a baby, but he has made a reappearance in her life now that she's older. He's remarried and has a five-year-old daughter as well. And that five-year-old daughter also goes to the same school that Madeline's daughter is going to attend. Madeline is remarried to Ed, who is like calm, cool, and collected and when I think of like Australian men, Ed is like stereotypical what I picture Australian man. Celeste is married to Perry. They have twin sons who are also five years old. Their names are Josh and Max. Perry's a fucking dickhead. Celeste miscarries a lot leading up to having the twins and they think that she's never gonna be able to carry a pregnancy to term and then they have the twins. Jane, who is new to town, only 24 years old. Her son's name is Ziggy. He is also five. Madeline and Jane meet on the day of kindergarten orientation. Madeline is like in the street, twists her ankle, Jane helps her. It's harped on quite frequently that Jane is unmarried. That is important. Jane's never been married. We have side characters like Renata, who is this like power woman who's always in the boardroom, and then her sycophant sidekick, whose name is Harper. All of these moms are like the kindy moms. Their kids are all going to kindergarten this year. The drama in this book is like immaculate, especially when it comes to Madeline. Like she is far too old to be behaving the way that she behaves, but alas, her inability to let shit go just kicks up so much drama. Overall, I hope that the characters were pretty fleshed out and I didn't have a lot of complaints about the characters. I just don't think when I like go back through books at the end of the year that the characters in this book are going to be ones that stand out to me. Even in typing my notes, I couldn't remember Renata's name. I knew that it started with an R and it ended with an A and I thought it was Rosa. So I think that that speaks for itself. I gave the characters an eight out of 10. So not bad, pretty decent. And then we're moving on to the atmosphere. Like I said, I borrowed the audiobook also to read along with this so I could double dork. It's set in Sydney, largely amongst mm. the homes of the women in the book and also at the school. And what we're doing is we're building up to this trivia night that is being hosted as a fundraiser at the school. Yeah, so there's not really a whole lot to say about atmosphere. The narrator for the audiobook does have an Australian accent, which I think helped immerse me in the story. And so I gave atmosphere also an eight out of 10. Right.
writing. There is a line that repeats over and over and over again in this book, and every single time it popped up, I thought of a song by the band All Time Low. The song is called Oh Calamity, and the line is Oh Calamity. So that is just something like of note. That's really the only thing that stood out to me for the writing. I did find like the little police interview snippets that are at the beginning of some of the chapters and the end of some of the chapters to be kind of funny. The characters who are providing interviews are kind of just so wrapped up in their own drama that no one really is acknowledging like that someone is dead. But yeah, nothing stood out particularly about the writing as like this is the best thing I've ever read. Nothing stood out as this is the worst thing I've ever read. I gave the writing an eight also. We are told in the beginning of this book that someone is dead. The mystery is who. Now we the reader are led to believe that it is either Madeline, Jane, or Celeste because each chapter has, well most chapters have some sort of interview snippet and those snippets are all told from secondary characters perspectives. So it'll be like Bonnie said whatever and noticeably Celeste, Jane, and Madeline are absent from these interview snippets. You really don't find out who's dead until damn near the end of the book which is really fun and totally kept me guessing. I I think that if you really love drama, you're gonna like this book. It's not something that really screamed to me. I like my mysteries to be a lot more on the thrilling side. I don't know, maybe I just don't like Mean Girl attitudes and kind of Madeline gave Mean Girl. Anyway, it's not the best thing I've ever read, but it's also like not the worst. And I did audibly gasp at one point. So, you know, that's always something fun for me. It took me quite a long time to get through this book because the plot wasn't really plotting, you know? It was fine. It was fine. I gave it a 7 out of 10. I keep saying, oh, I borrowed the audiobook. I borrowed the audiobook. I borrowed the audiobook because I was only halfway through this book and it had been three days and I couldn't focus. I read half of it by myself and then I double worked the other half. But as time went on, I just found myself being less and less interested in picking up the book. Like, just tell me what happened already. I wasn't really here for all of the dramatic lead up. It wasn't really fun for me. Quit beating around the bush, please. Double dorking it did kind of help aid my interest and once I got the audiobook I finished it in one day. Like once I borrowed the audiobook I was able to finish the rest of the book in one day. Like I said earlier the narrator is an Aussie so it was really fun and immersive once I had the audiobook but I did give Intrigue a five because it took me so long to get through it. I just wasn't interested. I don't know. I can't really pinpoint why because there was nothing inherently wrong with the writing. There was nothing inherently wrong with the characters. The only thing that I can think of is I just wasn't that interested in the plot. For logic, I have nothing remarkable to say. Honestly, I know when it gets down to logic, I have a struggle with trying not to provide spoilers. So again, I can't provide too much insight into the logic of this book because that would be spoilery. I just wish that there was a little bit more backstory for one particular character that would help me to grasp the believability of the choices that they make. If you've read this book, I think that you will know what character I'm talking about. We kind of just briefly blip on a decision that she makes and I'm like, hmm, I could have used a little bit more. 8 out of 10 for logic. And then for enjoyment, we're tying the enjoyment into my intrigue for this one. I just wasn't interested in picking it up. I just wasn't enjoying it until I got onto the audiobook. This book is in length on par with another book that I've read this month. And it took me three times as long to read this book as the other book that is this long. So I just, I, I wasn't really enjoying it. And I'm going to be honest, I do have one more Leanne Moriarty book on my shelf and I'm honestly not sure if I'm gonna keep it there. It's Nine Perfect Strangers if you're curious. I think that's the title. Running through total scores for this book we have a 49 out of 70 which averages out to 7 and my star rating for that according to my Copile rating breakdown would be 3.75 so it wasn't bad it just wasn't the best thing I've ever read. At the end of the day I am curious to know if the show on on HBO would differ in any way to this book. If you've watched the show, let me know in the comments if it's worth my time. I'm not a TV watcher. If I have free time, you all know I'm spending it reading. But if you've watched the show and you think it's worth my time, please let me know. And with all of that being said, 
I am going to go. If you like this video, feel free to leave me a like. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever seen parents behaving as dramatically as the parents behave in this book. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe. It is, at the end of the day, free for you and so fun for me. Otherwise, I will see you all very, very soon. Goodbye.